Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I predicted in my opening statement, we've heard a lot about a number of things that have nothing to do with the defense of the United States of America. For 53 straight years, the Congress of the United States and the President of the United States have worked together in a bipartisan fashion to pass a National Defense Authorization Act to provide for the defense of the American people, the number one job we have under the Constitution. And yet we find ourselves here today literally tearing ourselves apart as a body over issues that don't have anything to do with defending America. I want to urge people on both sides, however they feel about all of these issues, to understand whether you win or you lose your amendment in committee or on the floor, at the end of the day, we come to uh, together as Americans and we defend our country. That's what our, our constituents send us here to do. And if we can't come together on that, then we are truly lost as a nation. I don't think we're lost. But we wander off in places we shouldn't go when we have debates like we've had today. It's unfortunate. I'm the descendant of immigrants. I dare say virtually everybody in this body are descendants of immigrants. It's not even debatable that immigration is good for this country or the vast majority of us wouldn't even be here. That's not the point of this bill. The point of this bill is to defend the country. We heard a lot about the OCO account, and it was called a slush fund. This president and presidents before him have asked for an OCO account every year since it was first created. And not once has it been a slush fund. It has been used to defend the United States of America, as this OCO account that's in this bill will be used to defend the United States of America. The gentleman from Massachusetts has been around here longer than I have, but I'm sure he knows that the primary jurisdiction of the House for an AUMF in this Congress is with the Foreign Affairs Committee, not with the Armed Services Committee that was the Committee of Jurisdiction on this bill. The Foreign Affairs Committee is working on an AUMF, but they're waiting for information from the White House, which they haven't gotten yet. So maybe we can get that information from the White House, get to work on an AUMF, and get it on this floor in the appropriate vehicle. But the National Defense Authorization Act is not the appropriate vehicle. And so rule, ruled the Rules Committee. And that's what's in this rule. You know, I've heard a lot of talk about what's germane to the bill and what's not germane to the bill. This is not about germaneness. This is about a central function of the federal government. It's about defending the American people. As I stand here today during this debate, I'm reminded of the great sacrifices our men and women in uniform and their families make on a daily basis so that we may continue to debate and deliberate in an open way. Debate and discussion have been the foundation of our democracy, and we owe that to our nation's military. The least we can do is honor that tradition of service and sacrifice by continuing the bipartisan tradition of passing an NDAA for the 54th straight year. So whether there are people on one side that want to vote against the bill because there's something in there they don't like about immigration, or people on the other side are trying to make a partisan point by telling their side don't vote for the bill because of OCO or because we're worried about what it might do to domestic policy programs, we need to put that out of our minds. At the end of the day, whatever the amendments are added or not added to this bill, it's our job to pass this bill to defend the country. There will be plenty of opportunity for partisan disagreement down the road, but not on this issue. At this time, we need to come together, not as Democrats, not as Republicans, but as Americans. Let's pass this rule. Let's debate these amendments, all 135 of them. But most importantly, let's pass this act. Let's give our military men and women the resources they need to do their job. Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time, and I move the previous question to the resolution. Gentleman yields back. And without